Howdy, people. So, I've been searching the internet on and off, trying to figure out something about this motor. And this is the problem. I have a Tohatsu 90 model number MD 329 2006. Anyway, uh, a while back, my wife get, or my mom gave me this boat, and it's been sitting up a couple of years, and I've been having issues with it, uh, revving up real high, uh, sputtering, um, just really poor idle. I cleaned the gas, I changed the uh, separating filter, I got fresh gas in there, I even got treatment in it. I changed my plugs out and nothing, and I even changed my filter out. Nothing fixed it. So, well, basically, what I've come to think is it's going to be this TPS. So, I ordered this off to Hatsu's website, and I'm going to show you how to hook it up. And hopefully, that fixes our problem. So, bear with me. So, just a thought before you start. Um, and trust me on this one before you take these these out line this with uh, some kind of paper or cardboard because a magnet won't get these out of the bottom lower half of your engine so if you do happen to drop it it will drop right here these are stainless steel they're not magnetic <clears throat> so just make sure you put a little barrier in there so it'll catch your screws if you do happen to drop them. I'm a klutz myself. So you have one, two, and three. You got one down there also. So you'll unhook this one and the back side. So, I got big, fat, chubby fingers. Use my little needle nose to grab a hold of these screws. Just to get them out of there and set them to the side. little washer be careful of that it's hard to get that back clip So the three screws, and you have your back clip. So what had happened was this, see how it resistance, it's got a lot of resistance to it, it doesn't just snap back, something's wrong inside of here. I read the uh, I put it on an ohm meter and I read it from top to middle and then bottom to middle and it's supposed to read about 5 ohms and it pegged out at like 1500 so it's definitely something's wrong with it but you can see that one 
we'll get the new one. This was not a cheap part, by the way. This was $277. See how it snaps right back? Okay, so there's a lot of resistance in this one. It's just not working. It's not working the way it's supposed to. And it's not it's not allowing the idling to uh, to idle properly. It's sending a, a, a mixed message to your uh, ECU, so it's causing your your fuel air mixture to be messed up, which is causing your fuel rail to expel a lot of gas into your um, into your spark plugs, which is causing them to file out, which was giving me my problem also. So once you clip them on. Do your bottom nut first. You might want to leave that top uh, clip undone just so you can get your hand in there. Put it on your rubber. But trust me with the, uh, the paper you do not want to try to fish out this little tiny screw when you drop it. Make sure this goes in here straight. If you don't get it in there straight, your um it will cross thread. And it will cause your ET your uh, TPS to be off where it's supposed to be so this is actually it really has no play but the play it does have is really fine so just try to get it as square as possible you don't want your top lower you don't want it sitting like this or you know you want it kind of level because the engine is going to actually see its position where it's located and it'll say oh because it's a throttle positioning sensor it wants to know whether the throttle is opening open or closed so just try to make it square these little rubber bumpers, they got little lips right here. Just touch that lip. Square it up. I'm sure there's a torque on this because this does have to move a little bit. I have not looked at that torque. I'm just getting it enough so it sits on these rubbers. Just enough to hold that sensor up there. And so it don't slide back and forth. This one's too tight. Sorry for my camera work. I'm the only one out here. So, you see here. See how it tightens up. So you're gonna want them at about even on all the way around. And that keeps that from moving forward or back. So now it snaps back like it's supposed to. Other than like this, no snap back. So after you take your paper out, uh, this thing, this lever should be 
where it should be. You, this does not move. It does not go in or out. So just put it on there. Hold the back of this and snap it on. If you don't hold the back of it, you can cause a break in this arm, trust me. Okay, now that you've got it snapped on, just make sure you're primed up. Turn your water on and we'll give it a start. Actually, you need to, uh, once you re replace your TPS, you're going to want to reset it because you got a new one put in. And you're going to have to go through a procedure and I'll show that to you. Okay, now that we've reset our TPS to uh, reset the ECU. So the ECU, there's a, there's a process you have to go through with your key switch. So I'm going to put this over this. Pause. Take a screenshot of it, whatever you need to do. This is how you reset your ECU and your TPS. Okay, we've reset we've reset the TPS. You'll notice at the end of that um the end of that uh, thing there's a little graph. It's easiest to see it on that tell you exactly when to do it wanted to do it if you don't get the three beeps at the end then your ECU did not reset so it behooves you to just do it again it's not gonna hurt anything do the reset again run it through as many times as you can you want that ECU to be able to see um, that you have replaced the, the TPS the TPS is in a new position and it's supposed to be functioning. So with that being said, so once you got it, turn your water on, make sure you got gas, unlike me, pump your bulb, your throttle's closed, got good filters, and let's hope for the best. So here we go. All right, we'll give her a start. I'm not showing any warnings right now, so which is good. Uh, got key off on. Um, 